All right. Hey guys, Tyler Jeffcoat with Seller Accountant. And today I want to talk to you about the dreaded journal entry, right? So the, uh, I think the kind of the dirty word for anyone who hates accounting is what in the world is a journal entry? How does it work? I want to talk you through very, very quickly how the chart of accounts relates to itself. And then I want to just walk you through how to do a simple journal entry. One, so that you can realize that uh, you can't break QuickBooks online. It's possible to see where things have, uh, where things have been done and what might have been broken if an entry is done wrong. But I also want to give you a caution here. Journal entries are kind of the manual. It's kind of like instead of having an automatic, you've got a stick shift, right? You've got a manual drive and the ability to manipulate your books in a way that really does break the system is more possible with a journal entry than with kind of an automated entry that goes in there. So let's talk about the chart of accounts for a few minutes, just as a reminder to you guys, this is really important to understand that in the basic American accounting system, which, which holds true in most countries, by the way, it kind of looks like this. You number your accounts based on where they fit on two key statements. Your assets are in the 1000 area. Your liabilities are in the 2000 area. Your owner's equity is what's left. And so your, your, your balance sheet equals you know, assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. It's actually kind of a, there's a, a formula that's, that's, that's going on there. Your income statement is similar. So you, again, you see the logic here, went from 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000. Now we've jumped down to our income statement where normally our revenue, our income accounts are in the 4,000, cost to get sold 5,000 or other, our other normal, our kind of expenses, they call it SGNA, selling and general admin, are 6,000. They're going to produce a net income or net loss. And so these accounts interact with each other. And so, again, for those of you who don't have an accounting background, you know, in a, a classic example of an entry, whether it's a manual journal entry or an entry that just uh, comes in through your bank feed, is that we want to increase revenue while we also increase cash. Because what we got was we got, let's say we got a $100 deposit in our checking account, right? Well, the way that the fundamental entry would look for that deposit would be 100 bucks getting uh, slapped into our checking account. That's called a debit. And then 100 bucks, sorry, let's make this revenue. Our revenue account is going to get credited by $100. And so in this kind of world called double entry accounting, you have to touch that $100 twice within your accounting system to make it a completed. And this kind of makes sense. What we've done is we've had, we have cash. Money has come in and therefore our balance sheet goes up by $100 on the assets. And the way that we offset or do the second side of that double entry accounting is that we've also had income uh, revenue increase by by that same hundred dollars. So let me just show you that same journal entry here within my dummy accounting system here. And so by the way, if you click on the plus here in QuickBooks Online, you can go into the journal entry. And it's going to pull up a really um, kind of blank sheet here, right? You're going to make sure you want to select the right date. I really am a big proponent of naming your journal entries. Uh, Rev entry number one. And again, to execute that journal entry that we just talked about, let's go to our bank account. We got that $100 deposit. And then let's go to, and this one I'm going to call it Amazon sales, also for $100. This equation balances. Now, I could have had fees in here. I could have had refunds. I could have had a, a, a PayPal charge, whatever might have been book, booked into this. And this could have been a much, much more complex entry. Ultimately, it needs to balance in order for QuickBooks to let you save the entry. Uh, if you're doing a manual journal entry, it's important to put a description. <laughs> you know, Bezos gave me cash. Booked Bezos cash to revenue account, right? Or whatever it is. You want to put some kind of um, identifier that will allow you to understand how you came up with this answer down the line. The other thing you can do in a journal entry in this kind of area down here, and my, my picture is covering up part of it, but you can actually drag a spreadsheet. So for instance, another really, really common journal entry Let's change these. Watch this. This is inventory. Or hold on. The way we number them is this one. And then this is going to be cost of goods sold. And at the end of the year, we may have gone and done a, a count of our inventory and realized, uh-oh, we actually 
uh, our inventory on our balance sheet is undervalued by a thousand dollars. We need to increase inventory by a thousand dollars. You know, count of inventory and need to adjust. And so, in order to increase inventory, I've got to give us a break. I've got to basically put a thousand dollars back on the profit and loss because I'm going to decrease cost of goods sold. Now it could it could be the opposite, right? This could be an increase in cost of goods sold and a decrease in inventory. But if you're ever doing something like this, where you're going to be, um, especially when it comes to inventory and cost of goods sold, it's really really important to show your work by attaching. Um, uh, some kind of a note, some kind of a spreadsheet that shows, see, I counted the inventory. You know, I thought I had a thousand units. It turns out I have 1200 units. I got to put those extra 200 units back on the uh, balance sheet. Ding. Here's how I did it. Now, the last thing I want to show you here is when you save your journal entry. And now, by the way, there's nothing going on in this report. So this is kind of an empty, uh, an, an empty system here, right? So if I do all dates, and now I have my little thousand dollar entry that I made to make myself more profitable on um, cost to get sold. And I realized, oh crud, there's an error here. I need to fix it. Or I don't know who did this entry. You can always go in and click on the journal entry that you created and I can audit. I can go to more down here at the bottom and I can go to this thing called audit history. It's a beautiful thing. It shows us which of these rascal bookkeepers is the one that did this? Oh, Tyler Jeffco. I'm the one that went in there myself and did it. And here's exactly what happened. If, if the entry was later edited by somebody else, you can see the full running of what has happened in this entry, which is really, really powerful. The same thing I can, uh, the other thing I can do from this screen here is if this was a bogus entry, if it turns out that I didn't mean to do this, it wasn't uh, the correct way to handle it, I can click on that same more button and I can just delete it. And again, you just gotta be careful with journal entries. The reason you have to be careful with them is that it gives you a, a higher likelihood of unintentionally messing up your books. Um, but it is a nice way to make adjustments, to go in there and you really need to understand the accounting a little bit better. But I can kind of use a stick shift. I can use a manual system for getting my liabilities or my assets trued up or uh, getting cost to get sold and inventory trued up. That's a really common one in this business model. Uh, if I've, uh, if I've uh, bought a fixed asset like a computer or a vehicle and I need to depreciate it over time, I can use a journal entry to depreciate it. It's the most common way to depreciate something. And so just wanted to share this with you. I hope this is helpful. I hope I didn't make this more confusing, but you got to understand your chart of accounts and how the accounts relate to each other. And then you need to be very comfortable with a journal entry before you do one. If not, you probably want to have your professional account do it for you. Have a great day.